Tea is the most popular drink in the world, and there are countless ways we make and consume it. But if you want to drink tea in the oldest way we still know of, you'll first need to hike deep into the remote tea mountains of southwest China and handpick leaves and buds from tea trees that are hundreds of years old. It's a long way to go for authentic Chinese tea, but one person is doing it. My name is Xunan Tang. I'm the owner of Tea Drunk, which is a tea house in New York City. We specialize in historic Chinese tea. Historic teas really represent the pinnacle of tea culture. And these teas are usually not mass produced and they're trying to be as authentic to the tea as possible. It's almost like a masterpiece of music played versus a practice or a original piece of artwork versus the copies. The masterpiece tea, so to speak, comes from ancient tea trees that grow in the wild. They only bud for 15 days out of the year, so Shunan must race each spring to find the trees and harvest them in time with the help of local farmers. The best tea trees are always on some of the hardest to get to places because they need to be on very steep slopes. We usually motorcycle a little bit. Sometimes we tread water. Sometimes we climb. In this region, it's not uncommon for tea trees to grow for several hundred years. These tea trees right now is at its prime, and this is what tea is meant to taste like. Mm, tasty. Once we pick the tea, we need to spread it out in a cool area where the water can travel out before we can walk fry the tea. This step is to kill the enzymes so the tea fermentation can be stopped. Then we take the tea leaves out and then we roll the tea. Once the sun dries the tea, you need to pick out any discoloration. This sorting process usually takes months to finish because we do have to do them one by one with every single tea. Months will go by before this tea is ready to be poured out, but the journey is well worth it to Shannon. Those extreme fine points in taste that he offers us, I think it provides us a level of joy that's beyond anything else. And my job here is to preserve this art and hopefully even push it to a new height. This is kombucha real kombucha. That iced tea you buy in those expensive bottles, fermented and sweetened? It's good, but it's not kombucha. Somewhere along the line, the word was lost in translation. In Japanese, cha means tea. And this is kombu. This is the story of the real kombucha. First, the kombu. Kombu is a type of seaweed and a staple ingredient in Japanese cuisine. And Rishiri Island, off the northernmost tip of Japan, has become known for the kombu that grows here. Zenichi Kosaka is a third generation fisherman. After kombu is harvested and dried, it can be used to make anything from soup to salad to garnish. But for our purposes, we're going to make kombucha. Chiharu Hirakawa is a shop owner selling kombucha made from locally harvested kombu. コンブの粉末のお出汁を楽しんでもらうためにお湯で溶いたお茶です。昆布茶の特徴は海のミネラルがたくさん豊富に入っていまして、体にとてもいいです。I have to ask, do Sorry, nope. But do you have any words for those seeking real kombucha? 
そうですねアメリカ人の方もですねぜひあの日本の昆布茶を飲んでいただいて昆布のうまさですね純日本っていうあの昆布のお出汁を飲んでいただいて日本のことをもっと好きになっていただきたいです。总共拿到茶，呃，大概花了一个半小时到两个小时吧，好像。Waiting over an hour for tea sounds ridiculous, shocking even. But this isn't your everyday tea. What they're waiting for is cheese tea. Cheese is tea. 它是一个传打破传统的一个创新的饮品。年轻人这一代的话，不会说太过于喜欢就单纯的一杯茶，所以的话，我们就创作出芝士茶这款新式的茶饮。Cheese tea is exactly what it sounds like. Tea topped with cheese. 奶酪的话，我们会选择就是不会说偏酸或者是偏咸的，就是味道比较淡一点的。其实打字是比较浓稠，然后的话加在茶的上面，不会跟茶就是混在一起。上下两层的时候，第一口进去的话就是口感比较饱满、滑香，然后的话就是茶味会回甘。我们一个单八店的话，平均每天的话可以销售两千五左右，两千五百杯左右的茶。单八店的话，我们的产量的话可以达到四千四千五百杯左右。And today, cheese tea is more than just a novelty. It's gone global. From Malaysia to Los Angeles, people are drinking it everywhere. 在工作中的话，就带给了我很多快乐嘛。就是在这边做茶的话，很开心。Nothing says Britain more than nope, nope. Keep going. Ah,、oh, yes, there it is. A nice cup of tea. We know we have China to thank for introducing tea to the Western world, but how did it make its way to England and become the cultural obsession it is today? Well, that's all thanks to one Portuguese woman. The year 1662. The person, Catherine of Braganza. She had just won the hand of England's King Charles II with the help of a very large dowry, including money, treasures, and spices. This worthwhile trade made her the Queen of England, Scotland, and Ireland. When she arrived to her new homeland, she brought with her packets of loose leaf tea in crates labelled "Transport de Ervas Aromaticas." It's a theory that this was later abbreviated to T E A, tea. Now tea could already be found in England, but was only really used for medicinal purposes. Catherine continued drinking tea to her heart's content,、mm. and as the new royal, everything about her, including her beverage habits, was copied by other ladies desperate to be just like their idol. Another thing Catherine brought to the table from Portugal was the idea of tea drinking experience. She popularised the use of porcelain teacups and mugs. By the end of the 17th century, much of British aristocracy were enjoying the hot beverage. Oh, delightful! And soon enough, so was everyone else. Today, while tea can be found pretty much everywhere, it remains a special daily pastime for the Brits.、Mm. So carry on and drink tea, people of England. Let's talk about football. Blue forty-two. This football, right? No, no, no. Today we're talking about this football. Soccer? No, it's football. You have the players, the managers, and the tea. The tea, Mr. Parish. Please explain. Welcome to you all to Nottingham Forest FC, and have a great time while you're here. And don't forget, if you can, try a cup of my Tom's tea. <laughs> the best.
Nottingham Forest is one of the oldest football clubs in the world. They had a great run about 40 years ago, winning two European Cups and loads of other stuff. No, I'm very proud of this team. Happy days. But whilst those days are gone, there is still one world-class tradition that remains. Well, my name is Tom Parrish. I'm almost 89 now, not long before the 90th. I'm a tea boy and I love it. People, you know, they say, tea boy? I said, yeah, I worked my way up, you know. Here in Britain, it was a common occurrence for football clubs to have a tea lady or a tea boy. Sadly, these traditions are on the decline. But what does the tea boy do? Oh, crikey, what does the tea boy do? He makes tea, of course. So Tom isn't handing out tea at the sideline. He has his own kitchen next to the team's dressing rooms. Let me show you around. His job is to make classic cups of tea for managers, players, directors, photographers. That's one of our photographers. Yes, he's a good lad. The list goes on. So Tom, what are your top tips for making tea? You get the best tea, and that is Yorkshire tea. Boiling water over the tea bag. Get it to the side of the cup and squeeze it as much as you can to get the juice out of the tea bag. Put your milk in, that should be, I hope, a good cup of tea. It's not just a football match, it's something that you look forward to and it's there every week. That's what keeps you going. And as I say, I love it, love it. As long as I can walk and that the club will have me, I'll be here making a cup of tea.